Alright, I am back with an Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree video. <coughs> Eevee is in perfect uh, video position here. <laughs> um, and I have it in the background. You shouldn't be able to see that. And no spoilers, I don't think, from that. Uh, today I wanted to go through the tips article that I wrote and published earlier based on my 40 hours now of playing my review copy. Uh, I am not like Mr. Ultra Expert whatever, but I do think I have some uh, things that you might want to know here. And I will, you can read the article, I'll put it in the description, but I will kind of go through these one at a time and sort of elaborate on or explain better what I mean. And yeah, we'll see. Uh, the basics. This is a really, really, really basic just reminder. Um, you know, a lot of us haven't played this game for two years, so you may forget some pretty you know, seemingly basic stuff. One thing that is not the most intuitive is that the sort of quick access menu for your spirit ashes and your flask and your horse are, uh, it's hidden behind a layer. So you have to hold down triangle or Y or whatever uh, in order to bring that up. And then you hit the direction on the D-pad that you want. So you will be especially summoning your horse like all the time. So that is kind of a key thing uh, that you need to remember. And then of course my infamous did you know you could sprint in Elden Ring uh, by holding down O? That's more of an inside joke because I think 99% of players are not an idiot like me, but that's just like for starters here. Okay, getting into the more uh, specific tips here. I've gotten so many questions about, I'm, I'm going to combine a couple of these here. So about how power works now. And some people are like, am I too low of a level to go in? Am I uh, too high of a level to go in? Am I just going to stomp everything? Um, if you've beat if you've beaten Mog to get into the DLC, you're probably not too low. That means you're powerful enough and skilled enough to at least start competing in the DLC. Uh, and then there is no such thing as being too overleveled for this. It's impossible. Can't do it. Uh, the way they did this is they designed a system where, God, I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm gonna butcher it. Uh, you need something called Scatter Tree Fragments that increases your attack power and your defense power in the Shadow Realm outside of all your other stats. Uh, at first you will get one of these per level and then it gives you uh, you know an attack damage boost and then you'll need two and then you'll need three and then there is a, a close to identical item called revered spirit ashes which is the same thing but for summons um this was a little tricky because like over time i sort of found my my spirit or my summons falling behind and like kind of getting trashed during boss fights and not living as long as enough as i would hope for and so you got to kind of have to keep them uh, leveled as much as you, though even even now I'm still a couple levels ahead of my summons. Uh, you find these in like really obvious locations some of the times. Um, a lot of them will be at the kind of uh, Michaela Cross sites that are the sites of Grace you'll see. It will be right before a big boss room, it'll be right after a big boss room. Uh, you know, significant paths to the story, like you'll run into them. There are so many others. There are so, so many others in the most random of places. You may not uh, expect to find them. A lot of them are marked with these like kind of dead corpses and like a little cross-legged pose that like usually sit on the edge of cliffs. The most important one to know now starting is that there are these guys with sparkly pots over their heads. There are little shades and there are a lot of shades in the game, some of which are just like crying, some of which will stab you, some of which uh, will throw fire at you. But these guys have sparkly pots over their heads, and if you kill them, they will drop a one of the two materials. Really, really valuable, and so easy to miss. So easy to miss. Um, and I believe, I believe they can like run away, and if you don't kill them fast enough, they'll disappear. But you can come back later and kill them. You cannot just repeatedly farm them for uh, drops. However, very, very important. But this is not to say that your old stats are completely useless. Uh, you know, if you're increasing your health and your mana and your stamina and things like that, that is not something that, uh, you know, these new blessings give you. They're not increasing your pools of all this stuff at all. So like the length of your bars is still going to be determined by your existing stats. And obviously if you have maxed a category that is going to be more beneficial than not, even though there is some sort of scaling fall off as you go for that. Um, so it's in the the bonuses scale off of your current value, so you will have some more of an advantage, you know, at, at higher scale than lower. But I went in at one seventy, I think I'm like two oh two now, and I, you know, there were people four, five hundred, seven hundred who were struggling just as hard as I was on some of these bosses here. So it's 
there is no easy way here and you cannot over level for this. So that was kind of three, three things combined into one here. Um, in terms of exploration, this map is so vertical, like vertical, vertical, vertical. Essentially, you can go pretty much anywhere you see on the map, you know, famous, <laughs> uh, but that's the style. But in this case, uh, unless you're looking down and something is a literal bottomless pit, if there are trees somewhere or a swamp or a building, you can get down there. Even if it's 500 feet below you, you can get down there uh, somehow. Getting down there is going to be very difficult in many instances. You have to find some sort of unseen ramp down. Um, you have to find a hole in the ground. You have to find a, a dungeon to get through. Same thing with going up cliffs. <laughs> uh, you're gonna have to find something that goes up in, the, in that direction. And so much of exploration here is vertical. So you're always gonna be wanting to look for like holes in the cliff face, like accessing huge parts of the map is, is dependent on finding these like little tiny cracks in the wall half the time. Um, you know, after 40 hours, I just found a way to get to that like cluster of buildings that is right behind the start zone. Like it took, it took me forever. I was like riding along that outside wall, trying to find something. It's not that you gotta go somewhere else. I won't ruin it if you want to find it yourself, but there's a lot of stuff like that. And you know, where things get it the most vertical, there is a mountain on the far side that looks like maybe it's just background decoration. You go up that mountain, you go all the way up that mountain. <laughs> it is not uh, a main story area, but it is very tall and you do get up the entire mountain. So exploration here is, I would say, a lot more vertical, even though you're going to start on the gravesite plane, which is very, very not vertical. Uh, but the further you go, you're, you're going to really understand <laughs> what I mean here. Um, more of a general statement here, but you should probably not just try and you know beat your head against the wall against some of these early bosses there is uh this guy really close by with an explosive crossbow and a mausoleum it could be a nightmare there's the it's either the death knight or the black black knight jail gale jail <laughs> um where these are kind of like early mini bosses you can fight that will wreck you um there's the big fire guy. Don't go anywhere near the big fire guy. Don't. I just killed him like two hours ago. <laughs> like you don't. You don't want to go that near guy anytime soon. The point is, if you run into something that just seems like absurdly impossible, uh, based on your current power level and your defensive capabilities, just just go back. Unless it is a necessary story boss, go back. Even if it is a necessary story boss, honestly you're probably want to gonna go and explore around other regions, get more fragments, power up yourself, and then come back. You'll have to do this for many bosses. There is the thing at the top of the mountain. I could not could not beat it, could not come anywhere close to beating it. Uh, eventually came back after 10, 15 hours and beat it. Uh, some things I still can't beat and I'm still working. But um, there's there's no reason to go that, you know, hard hard at things and, and not feel any real result. However, um, you should know, I didn't really put this in here, but like these enemies hit absurdly hard. There, you can easily get two, three, four shot by enemies if you are not uh, scaled up enough. Or, but like that doesn't really change. Like even now, I'm still getting two or three shot by the current power enemies I'm at. To prevent this, it's essentially you got to get those fragments to boost your defensive capabilities. I think you will know more. You will notice more of a significant improvement to your offense because like if you're just chipping away at a health bar and you're taking you know, that much damage, like, okay, maybe that's not going to work. But if you're powered up enough where at least the fight can be shorter, if you're doing enough damage, then, okay, maybe you're getting somewhere. Uh, and then the other thing is obviously trying to match your talisman resist to whatever the boss, whatever damage the boss is doing. You may want to go back to the old map and try and find some of those talismans. There are new ones, but like the, some of the old ones, like the fire talisman or whatever, these are all in the old map. So you may want to Go find those, look up some guides to better prepare you for some of these fights. I've been going back to look up stuff uh, and, you know, things that I've missed that I've I've found kind of necessary now. So, yeah, that's not a piece of advice I put in here, but that's what I'm adding right now. Um, related to that, you can experiment with gear more, I'd say here, because, you know, they're giving you a lot of new, especially weapons. There's, there's a lot of new weapons. There's some new spirit ashes, too. And... You're, you're a lot more free to experiment here than I think you used to be because um, they're, they're just kind of dumping smithing materials on you. So you shouldn't be afraid to level up uh, the new weapons you want to get and try out. You're, you're really going to have to level them up pretty much close to max or else they're just not going to uh, compete damage-wise in the way you need them to be. 
it's a little bit of a janky system that you have to do that, but you're going to get so many materials that it's not really going to matter. And then, of course, you can buy almost all the crafting materials back at the original map's home base, provided you have found the bells, whatever they're called, to, to open up the inventory. Again, if you don't have those, if you can't get to the highest levels of those, uh, look up guides and go find those because um, if you're just finding stuff on the map, there is a limited quality of stuff, quant quantity of stuff. I've had to do that for the, uh, the Spirit Ash Grave Wart stuff because I just ran out and I'm trying to level up some of these cool new guys. So I had to go and find like the top level uh, version and, and start farming that out with runes. Uh, but yes, you, you are free to experiment more, I think, than you are in other games. Um, this is something they just added that is like extremely from software. They put in this new feature where if you get a new item, it will show up in your inventory with an exclamation point. There was also a new items tab where it will show all the items you've gotten in order. That's great because they used to like pick up something and not know where it went, not even know what type of item it was some of the times, and you have to go hunt it down. Don't have to do that now, but you have to go into settings to turn this on in the first place. Even though the patch installed it, it is not on by default. Who knows why? Uh, you have to go into settings and display to turn on uh, both of those. So I would do that. <laughs> okay. This is not something I did, but you you may want to think about it. Uh, and that is starting over, essentially. Not you know completely starting over, but starting with a new build, doing a rebirth, and uh, trying something different. The, the cons to this is that trying to do the DLC on a totally brand new build you're unfamiliar with is probably going to go poorly at first uh, because you have not had 100 hours of experience with that build. That said, I do, I, I think one of the downsides with this um, is that there are some limited, uh, it's a limited amount of options that you can um, expand your build because there's so many different builds and they had to put in something for everybody. So with my magic class i've only found two magic spells that i'm i've used with any significance one i i'm not even using anymore uh and i found no new scepters so far in 40 hours that i've like replaced my other one existing ones with so you know i've got new armor and stuff but that's you know that's not really something you're investing in as much and then your spirit ashes aren't really tied to your build in this in the same sense uh so it's that's not ideal because like I've been throwing rocks and Renala moons and, you know, night comments at people for dozens of hours already. So like to keep doing that and pretty much just that with like maybe one or two new spells uh, is a little dull. Granted, I think it's made me be able to progress further uh, and you do get stronger and all this stuff. But um, I also would understand if people wanted to try out an entirely new build and this DLC may be a jumping off point for that. But you're probably going to get your ass kicked, so... Uh, 10 final recommendation, watch videos like this, <laughs> read wikis, read guides. There's this kind of nature of gatekeeping with FromSoft games that really by Elden Ring now, like it feels so antiquated where people are like, okay, unless you're doing this blind, unless you're not using magic, uh, unless you don't use summons during boss fights, you're not really beating the game. It's like, fuck off. Like, <laughs> Don't listen to anybody that says that. They're just gatekeeping elitists. This is a single player game. Like, Jesus Christ, play it how you want. <laughs> you, The enemies are not going to write you a sternly worded letter and disqualify your, your win here. Um, if you want to personally challenge yourself, like I've essentially been playing blind since I got my review code. And it, it was a really weird experience because so much of this game is like, I have no idea how I'm going to find that thing. I've been trying to get down this cliff for 10 hours. Like, I just wish I knew how to get down hard hard to do that when no one else is playing so that was a unique experience for me that was fun but now i am glad that other people are playing so i can be like oh okay i can finally get over this giant portion of the map i've been missing this whole time so one of the reasons i did a review in progress because like the, I, I couldn't find everything i wanted to find just playing by myself and talking to like two other journalists that were reviewing this um and then you know we have the people doing like level one no hit boss challenges like whatever that people are gonna be doing that with this too that's a lot of fun. That's probably how not how 98% of people want to play this game. So do what you got to do. Use whatever build. Use your summons. There's some cool new summons here. Um, I think people are going to like. I'm just kind of powering up a lot of them just for fun. Uh, so yeah, I am very curious to see what everyone makes of this. I think everyone's going to love it. I mean, I, I don't know why you wouldn't. And I'm still playing, as you can see. I'm an Another thing, 
definitely go back and re-explore old areas later uh, because you know what happens is like these, these a lot of these areas are very hard to get from point to point like really early on like there's that first keep that's like right off off grave off the gravesite plane that's pretty hard when you're, you're first starting out but now i'm back there at like scad tree level 12 and i'm blowing through it and being able to blow through it means i'm finding new uh locations and things i found a secret cross in like a the glowing cross in a room that doesn't even have a a freaking site of grace in it i never even seen that before and it had a scattered tree fragment there which i i never found the first time so you do kind of want to go back and explore old areas and it may be easier later once you're stronger because there are like d varying degrees of enemy difficulty in these different zones um and it gets harder and harder the more you go okay that's it for now maybe i'll do more of these later but hopefully that is enough to get you started thanks for watching and i'll talk to you soon take care